I mean, there are a couple of different approaches to teaching this class. One is uh, to make it fun. Uh, I really like to make uh, material uh, as engaging and as accessible as possible, so especially if you have relatively little experience in algorithms, you've just taken 6006. Uh, and these, some of these uh, algorithms get really complicated and they're hard to understand. Uh, and uh, you, it makes you wonder, how did they ever come up with that? And so I like to talk about that. Um, in some of the lectures, uh, I'll kind of give an idea of how they might have gotten there. It's like, oh, we could start with this really simple step. It's really inefficient, but at least it solves a problem. But then we add this extra thing and this extra thing, and eventually you get to the really fast solution. So it's less of a mystery of how you got there or how the original researchers got there. And uh, I also try to remind students that when, especially in the harder topics, that this is not easy stuff and you should think about it a little more, you know, do the problem sets, and you'll uh, learn it, figure it out at a deeper level. But a lot of this material is hard, and I think being honest about that makes it uh, more reasonable. Students don't feel bad for thinking that it's hard because the first time you learn it, it is hard. Um, but the whole algorithmic way of thinking of setting up a problem, what should the input and the output be, and then thinking about all different solutions for how to fill in the middle, um, I think is a really powerful perspective, and it can shape pretty much your entire life, but especially if you're doing computer science, um, it's a really useful way of thinking. And I've gotten lots of letters later from students where uh, you know, they're doing some job, some computer thing, and they ran into this problem, and then they discover, and then they looked back at their notes and said, "Oh, this is the right data structure I should have used. I, I should use now." And they solve it, and they tell me about it, and it's kind of exciting to see uh, years later that uh, you, the diff the way of thinking and uh, lots of the solutions and techniques you see in this class really are useful out there in the world. So it's a it's a useful class to take. You know, it's it's a relatively hard class. The exams are are challenging, and we try to make them. Not super challenging, but it's hard whenever, especially whenever creativity is involved, um, it's hard to do that live in an exam. So uh, students may not perform super well in the class, but still they get the idea that this is a way to approach problems and they uh, understand some of the techniques. Um, and over time they can sort of fill in whatever holes they left behind and say, you know, it seems like a problem where dynamic programming would be really useful. It's time I really learned dynamic programming. Um, dynamic programming is one that we actually teach both in 006 and 046 because it's really it's conceptually weird. Um, it's actually really easy once you understand it, but getting to that point of understanding is really tough. So we spend a lot of time on it. Uh, so the, the, the idea is the more exposure you get to it, the clearer it will become. I think by the end of 6046, they have a pretty good idea. But if not, years later, if they come back to it, I'm sure it'll be a lot easier this, this third time around. Um, so yeah, a lot of these concepts are, I mean, the ideas are actually really simple. They're just hard to uh, shift your mind into that kind of mindset. Uh, but once you do, things become really clear. And so hope is by the end of the semester, they, they get there.